everyone, welcome to yet another edition of Vare Q, a platform where I answer frequently asked questions about life. And this is a follow-up to a previous episode where I shared with you my tips on how to find a mentor in life. A lot of you wrote in, they saw the video, and their, their by and large big comment was, that video really helped us in recognizing who could be our mentors and what kind of people should we go after if we are thinking of mentors in our life. But it didn't really answer the question of how do you go about finding them and how do you go about approaching them. So today's question on VareQ is assuming that you have found someone that you think could be a good mentor, how do you actually approach and connect with mentors and make them your mentors? <laughs> But before that, a quick summary of my experiences on who should be the mentors that you look out for. Number one, look for multiple mentors in your life and not just one. Two, look for people who are your age, your experience, so that you are not far away from their understanding and their interpretation of what you want and what you will get. And number three, look for people who have a contrary and different point of view from you. Now, assuming you have found such an individual and that is the right composition, in my opinion, for a mentor, the question then is, how do you go about approaching that individual? What should you do? What are the mechanisms around that? Number one, the kind of person that you've selected is someone who's known to you and perhaps works in your workplace or is maybe a, a friend from school, from college, or perhaps is someone who just stays in your neighborhood or something like that. But you know them. There's a connect. There is something that forms a bond or a connection. Now, that should be obvious. And I, and I assume that you will find it easy to approach them. However, you may not find it easy or comfortable to ask them for a mentor because here's what happens. Your ego comes in. You are essentially saying that someone who's pretty much the same age and experience as me, I am going to take that person as my guru, as someone who will despise, will will spread wisdom or will display their wisdom towards me and I will gain from that. And that mindset is a loser mindset. That's a fixed mindset because essentially what you're saying is that wisdom is a zero-sum game. Then if he or she is wiser than me, then I am less wiser than him or her. And that's not how it works, of course. My suggestion there, drop the ego. You know that. You already knew this as you were hearing this. Drop the ego. Your objective here is not to project yourself as someone who knows everything. Your objective here is to project yourself as someone who's eager to know, eager to learn, eager to change themselves should that be the need of the hour or the need of the situation. So as much as you can, tell yourself this is not about who is better, who is wiser, who is more intellectual. This is about who is willing to change. And trust me, the individual who is willing to change will always win in life. And if that person is you, and should you be willing to take that responsibility, that image, that persona, it will only hold you in good faith. So I have seen enough people who will just not have the courage or the will to reach out to someone who they should be reaching out to just because they think that's not the right thing to do and they will come across as stupid. Don't do that. Particularly at workplaces. There is this undercurrent of competition. There is this always underlining tone of combatness which happens amongst your peers at workplace because it's like, oh, you feel you're sitting for the same promotion, you're sitting for the same title, you're sitting for the same salary, you're sitting for the same responsibilities or whatever the case may be. And then it just feels, oh my God, if I were to reach out, there's this peer of mine and tell him or her that I would love to have you as a mentor, that's just such a downsell. That's just such a downgrade. But it's not. It is not. Two things will happen. One, if the individual is truly capable of being a good mentor and you've done your homework well to identify that, they will see this as a point of strength and as a point of maturity than as a point of weakness. And that is powerful. But number two, you will get 
the vibes from your managers and your peers in such a way where you had the vulnerability and the courage to approach someone who's a peer and yet be willing to learn from them. And trust me, the right kind of people at that point of time will respect you for that. They will admire you for that. They will appreciate you for that. And that is never going to be any lesser than any other vibe that you would want to get. So that's number one. People that you know, people that you have a connect with, but just feel shy, embarrassed, or anything else to approach them, mostly because of your ego. I hope this helps. But number two, the harder one. People that you know from a distance and haven't yet known or there is no connection and you would just love them to be your mentor. Case an example, and I'm sorry I'm putting myself in here because it's just easier. Let's say you are consumed my videos a lot. Maybe you are about the same age or same experience as me and you feel that I could be a good mentor to you. I'm not suggesting that that's the case, but let's assume that that is. If that's the case and you don't know me and I don't know you, how do you really reach out? There are two things that you need to recognize here now. And I spoke about this and I wrote about this several years back, but it just stayed with me. And that is all about respect. Respect comes in two forms. Respect comes in the form of what you call known respect and unknown respect. Here's what unknown respect is. And this is by far the most popular and the most common form of respect. Unknown respect is when you respect someone, but you don't really know who they are. You don't really know them. So if you have a respect for me as an individual, or you, let's say, respect Mukesh Ambani or Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg, but you don't know them, that is unknown respect because all the respect that you've gathered for that individual is from a distance based on how they project themselves in the media or the media projects them. And it's all the story that you're telling yourself in your head of who they are and how they operate and how they could help you. But known respect, which is the harder one, is when you continue to respect someone despite knowing who they are. When you continue to respect someone, knowing very well what their fallacies are, knowing very well who they are as an individual and how they operate. This is the hard one. This is where most people fail. So if you worked with me or if you have known me for several years and yet you respect me, that's the kind of respect that is brilliant. That's the kind of respect that is gold because I have gathered and I have managed to gather your respect for several years despite all the things that I've done, despite all the ways that I've failed, despite all the mistakes that I've made, and yet you continue to look at me in a way that I can hopefully lift you up in your worst times and be some sort of a guidance around there. That is the known respect part. So recognize that when you are thinking of a mentor from a distance that you don't know as yet and that you think could help you, that is unknown respect, which means it's quite likely that when you do get to know them, you may not respect them as much as you do right now. It's quite likely that when you truly get to see how they operate or you get to meet them in person or you get to know them up front, you will not appreciate everything that comes along with that. You may not like them eventually. You may just feel that the stories that you created in your head are nothing close to what the reality is. With that admission in mind, the only way that you can truly influence someone external who doesn't know you and get them to think of you as a mentee and think of themselves as your mentor is if you're able to form a connect that they care about. Here's the truth that you need to know. Everyone in this world cares about something and you know that already. But what you might not know is that everyone in the world cares about it so deeply that they're willing to do that for anyone or for anything just because they care about it deeply. So for instance, I care a lot about storytelling. I care a lot about making people aware. I care a lot about helping people. And if there's anyone who comes in with that ideology, with that story, with that mindset, with that position in life, then I know that I can be in a capacity to help them because it directly applies to something that I care about. But I don't care about, say, making money. I don't care about being rich. I don't care about buying cars. I don't care about um, going on fancy vacations and, and showing off who you, I am or, or, or look how pretty I am or look how handsome I am and so on. And so I don't care about these things. So if there's someone who cares deeply about these and I'm not suggesting that these are frivolous things that you shouldn't care about, you can care about, but it's not that I care about them. So if you think that you're someone who's a true 
money maker and who has money on their minds and you want to start a startup for making money and who wants to be a billionaire and wants to be in the Forbes rich list and so on and so forth. And then you think of me as a mentor, I will be a bad mentor. I would not care about those things because it's not aligned with what I think, what my core thesis about my own life is and what you want to do and where you seek guidance from me. So there is a complete mismatch. So what you have to in your approach in your outreach towards those individuals is display that connect that you think they care about and hopefully you care about as well. And that can be an email, it could be an Instagram DM, it could be a LinkedIn message, it could be anything except please, for God's sake, don't send WhatsApp messages to people who do not know you, do not call people who do not know you. That's just downright rude, unprofessional. If you do that, no one will ever want to become your mentor because that's not the right way to approach. But it's perfectly legitimate to send them an email, it's perfectly legitimate to send them a LinkedIn message, to send them a DM on Instagram, or maybe even a Facebook message or something, but display the connection between what the individual or the mentor you want cares about and what you as the mentee stand for. If there is that connect, there will be a response. That response could very well be, you know what, I loved what you do, I love how you're thinking about it, but I just don't have the time and the will and the patience to commit to another mentee, so I'm going to opt out, but still, despite that, you got a response. The worst thing is you don't get a response. And most likely, you don't get a response because there is no connect. There is no connect. I get so many emails in a day about people wanting to make me their mentor, help them through their startup journey, help them through life or whatever is it. And I don't react to 90% of them because they don't apply to me. It's just a simple question. And I'm not sitting here with all the time in the world to become a mentor for everyone. That's not the best use of my time. I will genuinely become a mentor for anyone who wishes to do something that I also care about. So I will respond to that 10%. If they do something, write something, show me something that instantly forms a connection with what I care about and what is it that they do in their life. And that means the hard work of you finding that mentor who is external to you, who you do not know as yet, and who you wish can be your mentor, is not just about finding someone who is the right mentor fit, but also finding someone who cares about the same things that you care about, who is in the same worldview and mind frame that you would also be, and is just ahead of you or has lived life in a very different way that you feel you can learn from. This for me, it'll be the right way to approach people. I don't think of any other way that this would work. And trust me, this is coming from experience. I have the claim to fame of writing to so many people because I just write to people if they impact me positively. I would write to the authors of the books that I read and I love. I would write to the creators of videos that I watch and I admire. I would write to musicians whose songs that I hear and I love. And I'm just constantly writing to people, just telling them how grateful I am for that piece of art that they have generated. And I don't get a response mostly. And that's okay. That's perfectly fine because my need was not to get a response from them. But there are times when I write to someone with the intention of a response. And I will then make sure that I do everything possible in that email, in that LinkedIn message that forms that connect. It can't be about, hey, my name is Ankur Variku and I'm this cool guy and I think you should know me and that's why you should reply. It will be about, hey, I checked you and I saw that you'd also gone to Hindu college, it's the same thing I did. And oh my God, such a great place to be and I learned so much from that. And oh, you're also into photography and so am I. And these are the things that I love to do. I would love to hear how you do it. And oh, by the way, here's the main reason that I wrote to you. There is something that I'm thinking about and I feel that you could be a great guy to give me feedback on. When you write like that, it comes across as personal, it comes across as caring, it comes across as thoughtful, and it forms a connect. And until you don't do that with someone that you do not know, you will not get a response. So if you're looking for a mentor who is not known to you, who you wish could be your mentor, then the only way to do that is to form that connect between what they care about and what you care about and hope that there's an overlap. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions on this 
or on the mentorship idea in general, please post them in the comment section below. I will respond to all of them. Thank you so much for all the love and feedback that you're giving to VariQ. I hope this becomes big and I hope this answers most of the frequently asked questions that you also have in your life. Until next episode, I'll see you all. Stay safe. Bye. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that whenever we put up a new video, you're aware of it.